Hello and welcome to Infinity. Recently we did a video showing how to use the zone system and what I'm going to do now is answer a question I was asked after that which is how can you make a mask for a zone once you've selected it. Here's one way of doing it. So we'll start off, we'll do what we did before just to go over that. First convert to black and white one way of doing that is with a channel mixer, just pick the grey and that gives you a good monochrome image. Then what we're thinking about is one of the things that you can do with, with this sort of thing is to pick sort of lines, you know, light areas, like look at these lines around here. See if you could find those areas and sort of boost those. So what we're going to do is we're going to put everything above here. In fact, what we can do is if you've got the move tool selected, then you can click outside the picture and then it will naturally fall above. So now we'd like to, let's go to do a, I know what I'm going to do, I'm going to put a crop in here. This is something slightly different, but again, just adding interesting things you can do and drag the bottom down here and apply that. And all it's done is added a bit more space here, extended the uh, canvas here. And I'm going to go into file, place, pick up one of the overlays we've given away before and put it down here. So, and the reason to do this is when we improve the image we might actually be fixing this. Now what do we do? Is I'm going to get the rest of this, so I'm going to go to adjustments and to posterize. And if I set this to 11 zones, then that works for the to set this up. And if we look see here are the lows light areas and we want to mask out just that zone there. So what we're going to do is pick this, bring it up to there, zoom into it and say what matches. Is it that one or that one? No, it's definitely this one, isn't it? So that's zone six. Control zero to go back out again. And I'll put that back there. So I want to isolate zone six. That's my goal here. So what I'm going to do now is above this again, I'm going to put in layer and merge visible. And then I'm going to add a threshold to that. And now what we do here, when we move around backwards and forwards here, you can see that these are being selected one zone at a time. So if I go up to here, those areas though, where that line is, if I go to here, I can see it snaps into there if I go the, the way it's gone too far. So that's clearly what I want for this one. So now then, Control zero back out again to show you where I am. So I effectively have isolated the top part here, so everything white is in here, but I want to get it just to this here. So what I'm going to do is to select that threshold, Control J to duplicate it. But the problem with this is that when I move this, see it, it just does effectively, it's got that line going to the bottom. I'd like to come from the other direction. And the way to do that is to select this top layer here, Control I to invert it. Now, when I use the threshold, I can come in the opposite way. So I want to get down to just there so that the six is selected there. Now I want to be able to combine the two and the way to do it is select that layer and then change the blend mode to darken. And look, there we go. I've just got zone six selected and you can see where those lines are. Now then, what can I do here to get a um, something in, in here mask? So what I'm going to do here is just do another layer and merge visible. So I've got a solid layer above there. I'm now going to click these here, control G for a group, just hide them and then make that non-visible. So I've now got this layer here. Now I can get rid of this again here, so I'm just going to crop back out there and apply that. And this up here, probably need to fix that, so because that's likely to be a nuisance. So I'll go to my paintbrush, go to black and just paint that out. Get the opacity up, there we go. 
and you could do that sort of thing anywhere else if you want that. Now then, to turn that in the mask, there's various ways of doing this. But what I'm going to do before I do that, if you go into it, you see you can see it's got it's a very sort of hard pixelated edge, and so a little bit of blur can help. So I'm going to go to Gaussian blur. I'm actually less than one pixel is usually enough. So you just to soften the edge there. And I'm going to merge that in just to keep that as a solid layer because I'm going to turn that now into a mask. I can either do that, I can right click on it and go down to Rasterize to Mask. Or I can go to the channels, go to one of the red, green or blue, they're all going to be the same, right click it and say create spare channel. And then I can pick up that from there. Now I can unclick that there, go back to my original and click on adjustments here and curves. So I'm putting a curves into this and then I right click on the spare channel and say load to curves adjustment alpha and now it's the mask is automatically set there. Now when I work on this see it's actually just changing those areas there. And with this typically only a very small amount of change is actually needed to so I'll start to highlight it. Let's go out here and see where that works. See where that just a little bit just brings that up a little bit without it going completely nuts. What you can also do, you can turn it up a bit further. If I take the curves and drag it out again, the reason for that is I can put a mask on this as well. So now I've got a second mask. So I control I inverts that so I get back to the original picture. Now I can paint in those thing areas that I want. So I get a brush, make it white, opacity, turn that down, you know, to wherever, wherever down there. Now you can start to paint in those enhancements, where only in the areas that you want them. So it just gives a subtle little brightening over those there. So you get before and after, before and after. Okay. That's it, and thank you very much for watching.